Hi everyone, it's Sandy and this video will be a reading vlog dedicated to A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. In case you didn't know, Penguin Teen is hosting a read-along for An Ember in the Ashes. It's called the Hashtag Ember Read-Along and so the month of August is dedicated towards reading A Torch Against the Night. This is a sequel to An Ember in the Ashes which I reread in July. An Ember in the Ashes takes place in a world that is inspired by ancient Rome and this book in particular focuses on two main characters. We have Elias and Laia. Elias is actually a soldier at this very well-known military academy called Blackcliff and the day after he graduates from this academy he was actually planning on deserting. And the second main character that we follow is Laia and her brother has actually been arrested for treason and she pretty much has no way to rescue him unless she joins the resistance and helps them out. So that is what she does and her main mission that she receives from the resistance is to infiltrate Blackcliff Academy and spy on the Commandant who is this very cruel and ruthless high-powered woman in the Academy. This is definitely one of my favorite books and I had such a fun time rereading it. So going back to A Torch Against the Night, it's been like two years since I last reread it. Even though I read this book twice already, this is actually going to be my third time rereading this book. I have really bad memories so there's a lot that has happened in this book that I have forgotten. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this book and seeing where the story goes next. I'm also excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Penguin Teen. This is my first sponsored video on my channel and it's super exciting and I'm so grateful to have this opportunity especially since I'm being sponsored to promote a book that I know I already enjoy. So I'm really excited about this opportunity and I can't wait to talk more about A Torch Against the Night throughout this video. Today is actually Sunday and it's August 2nd. I won't be doing any reading today. I mostly just wanted to film today so I can create an intro to this video. Right now it's about 5 p.m. I've been working on school stuff all day. Earlier today I did film a video which is already up by the time that you watch this video. So if you're interested in hearing me talk about some of my most recent reads and also hearing a bit of a life update then I will have that video linked below. But I will definitely be starting this book tomorrow and I will talk to y'all then. Hi everyone! So today is Tuesday and I completely forgot to have a sit down and vlog about what I read yesterday. Right now I'm getting ready for work and I need to be able to do my makeup and talk at the same time even though I am really bad at doing that. It is currently 6 26. It is Tuesday August 4th and I woke up today at 5 15 a.m because I started like working out in the mornings. A good thing that came out of quarantine was me trying to get a little bit more active. Now that I'm back in the office full time, it's been hard to find time during the week to get active and I know that when I get home from work, I have no motivation at all to work out. In order for me to find time to work out, I have to force myself to get up early in the morning to be able to do that. And usually if I don't work out in the mornings, then I wake up like at 5.45 anyway, so it's only like a 30 minute difference. Although the mornings that I do work out, I feel really rushed because everything is on a time crunch and I I am also the type of person that needs to eat breakfast in the morning otherwise I will not be able to function at work. Yesterday I read 56 pages of A Torch Against the Night and I'm really enjoying it so far. I was going to try to keep this vlog spoiler free but now that I'm reading it there's really no way for me to keep it spoiler free if I want to really talk more in depth about what's going on in the book and plus since this is a sequel there is definitely going to be spoilers about An Ember in the Ashes so if you haven't read An Ember in the Ashes or A Torch Against the Night and if you don't want to get spoiled about those two books then unfortunately you probably shouldn't continue watching this video but if you have read both of those books then please continue watching so we can discuss more of our thoughts together. So this second book pretty much picks up where the last book left off and it's intense because Elias and Laia are both on the run and there's definitely a lot of things already happening with them trying to stay safe and stay hidden. In A Number in the Ashes we only had dual point of views which is Laia and Elias and in this book we have Helene's point of view. I always have mixed feelings about Helene because I do really like her as a character but she can definitely be kind of petty at times especially in the first book though I I do understand why she feels the way that she does and I'm really looking forward to actually being in her point of view and seeing more from her especially with her new role as the blood shrike. I also hate the fact that Marcus is now the emperor. Marcus and the commandant are definitely very terrible people and I hate them with a burning passion and I'm not looking forward to seeing all the things that they're going to do that will make things difficult for the other characters that I care about. Basically where I left off is Elias being poisoned after his little encounter encounter with the commandant and she 
poison the weapon that she used to cut him and now we've been introduced to the soul catcher even though i've already read the book there's a lot that i've forgotten and i do have an idea of who the soul catcher is but i'm definitely looking forward to remembering more of her role and her interactions with elias and what that entails for him especially with him in the process of dying right now that's pretty much my thoughts on the book so far i will definitely continue reading on my train ride to work and then my train ride back home my commute is essentially the only time that i have to read nowadays because as soon as i get home i have to do stuff for school i have to eat dinner i have to take a shower so i don't really have time to read at night and plus at night i'm too tired to get some reading done i also have class later today the class that i'm taking focuses on social welfare policies it is an interesting class and i'm learning a lot but it's so much information and I feel like my professor just blasts through all of the powerpoints. My class starts at 6 today and it goes until 7 30 and usually I get off work at 5 30 but during the summer we have summer hours so I get off work at 5 but because I have class at 6 I talk to my boss and he lets me leave the office at 4 30 on Tuesdays which is really nice so I am able to get home in time before class but I'm like definitely trying to rush home and then as soon as I get home I have like maybe 15 10 minutes to eat so I'm like stuffing my face as soon as I get home so that I'm not like starving during class almost done with doing my makeup I definitely got some mascara on my eyelid, but I don't care. I usually try to go pretty light with my makeup I don't like to do like a full face or anything just because I don't have too much time and I'm lazy So this is pretty much my daily makeup look for work It's now 640 and now I gotta go make myself some breakfast so that I'm not starving later when I'm at work And I will definitely check in with you all later tonight Hopefully if I remember it's been a while since I vlogged so trying to get back into the swing of things So it's a lot later now. It's currently 7.41. I just had class on Zoom and class ended like eight minutes later, which I hate it when class goes over the time that it's supposed to end. Every now and then if class goes a little bit later, I don't mind, but this happens like every single week, which is kind of frustrating. Anyways, going back to A Torch Against the Night, I read up to page 120, so I made some decent progress on this book. So basically, Helene is assigned the task to hunt down Elias, bring him to the emperor and then eventually execute him. And meanwhile, Laya went to go find the Telus extract that would help with Elias's seizures. But during this process, she's recognized by another person and this person wants to use her to get to Elias. And as this person is chasing her, she like hides in this area and she whispers to herself to disappear and she actually disappears. So I'm definitely looking forward to learning more about this ability of hers to disappear and seeing how that plays out later on in the book. The last chapter that I finished is basically Keenan and Izzy finding Laya and Elias and now they're all going to be together. Since I have already read this book, I do kind of remember what happens down the line regarding a certain character's fate and I'm not looking forward to reading about that. Also, we learn more about Keenan in this book and I will talk more about that once I get to that part. Now I'm just going to go shower and just basically get ready for bed and relax for the night. Hi everyone, so it is now 6.46 p.m. I pretty much got home from work like 45 minutes ago and I just had dinner and I wanted to do a little update. I am currently on page 190, so I did read about 70 pages today, which is a pretty good chunk. I did film a short clip of me doing some reading during my lunch break. This so was taken in the lounge of the building where my workplace is located. There was no one around and I was wearing a mask. I didn't read that much on my lunch break because usually I like to watch something and eat. So I think I read like five pages, but 
but I filmed a clip of it anyways. So the main thing that has happened so far is Elias, Laya, Keenan, and Izzy, they are traveling to Nur, and Elias is planning to redeem this favor that he's owed by this tribeswoman that he met in the first book, An Ember in the Ashes. And then of course, Helene and Elias have a bit of an encounter and Elias manages to get away safe and unharmed, although we knew that was going to happen. So things are kind of looking good for Laya and Elias so far because they did manage to escape and they also managed to secure the help from Afia, who is like the leader of one of the tribes and she and her tribe is going to help Laya and Elias get to Koff and help free Darren, who is Laya's brother. I am a little bit ahead on my schoolwork so fortunately I don't have to do any class readings tonight so I can just chill for the rest of the night and I'm going to like catch up on some YouTube videos. Later tonight I'm going to watch the ninth episode of the Umbrella Academy season two because that came out last week. That is the show that I'm currently watching and since there's like one episode left after the one that I'm watching tonight I need to start figuring out what show to watch next so if you have any recommendations please let me know preferably anything on Netflix or Hulu. It's Thursday now and it's about 6 38 p.m. I just finished eating dinner and to give a little update about a torch against the night I'm now on page 264 so I'm like a little bit halfway through the book which is super exciting but a lot like just happened within the past 20 pages Elias has separated himself from the group and he is going to cough prison to free Darren on his own that's going to be an interesting adventure and the last chapter that I read was Elias's chapter while he's in the prison trying to impersonate a guard and he gets caught by the warden who recognizes him that is definitely not going to be good for Elias and to talk a little bit about what's going on with Laya. She is still making her way to Koff with all those tribes people and on the way they run into a bunch of scholars that reveal that the commandant has orders to kill all scholars. So they are trying to seek some sort of safety so them and Laya end up hiding in the caravan and I definitely remember the scene really clear where the mask is searching this caravan and Laya ends up becoming invisible and so when the mask looks into where Laya is actually hiding in he only sees two people rather than three. Obviously this whole fight ensues and people die and unfortunately one of the people that died was Izzy. I really liked Izzy as a character. She's always been a character that was there for Laya and supporting her and I'm sad that she's gone. So that's pretty much where I'm at with the book. Tomorrow is Friday. I'm just ready for the weekend. My plans for tonight is to catch up on an episode of The 100. I believe there was a new one last night. Also an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Both of those shows are in their final season and to speak a little bit about The 100, I'm pretty disappointed with this current season. Season. Without going into spoilers, it has to do with Bellamy's character. I just wish he had more of a presence in the season. There was definitely something that was revealed about his character that I am waiting for that to be proven false. And also this season in particular is like very very sci-fi heavy in particular I feel like and I'm just not really enjoying the storyline very much. So it's pretty unfortunate especially since it is the last season but that's just how I feel about the show right now. As always after I film my little update of the day, I'm gonna go shower and then I can finally jump in bed and relax. So today is Sunday and it's like 6 45 p.m. I have not vlogged at all in the past couple of days. I just forgot to vlog on Friday and then I didn't vlog at all on Saturday because I didn't read anything yesterday but I do want to give an update about where I'm at with A Torch Against the Night. I'm actually almost done with it. I'm now on page 369. I have less than a hundred pages left and I'm just going to try I see a spider. That is on the ledge of where this camera is sitting and I don't like it so I'm just gonna go take care of that real quick. <laughs> so by now we know that Laya has the ability to disappear and in the first book we know that Helene has the ability to heal and I'm definitely curious to learn more about why these two characters have these abilities, what makes them special in particular. We also have Cook who's actually trying to help Helene try to find Elias and she's making it very clear that Helene should not harm or hurt Laya. I know that there's more of a personal relationship that Cook has with Laya that just hasn't been revealed yet. I think that Cook is actually Laya's mom but I can't remember whether that is true or not so I am waiting for that information to be revealed and pretty much where I left off was with Laya and Keenan. They have separated themselves from the tribe and they ended up having sex and she finds out that Keenan is actually the Nightbringer. That was definitely a surprise when I first read this book because I did not expect that at all. I just thought Keenan was like a normal ordinary rebel but he is the freaking Nightbringer which is like what the hell and now I'm going to continue reading this book and hopefully finish it tonight.
So I'm now on page 404 and we know that the Commandant, worst person ever, is planning on overthrowing Marcus and becoming Empress herself. And so Helene had the decision of either to go back to where Marcus is and tell him what the Commandant is doing or to get Elias out of cough and bring him to the Emperor. She didn't have time to do both. So she chose to just go back to Marcus and tell him what the Commandant is doing. But of course, the Commandant is always like two steps ahead. And now as punishment, Helene's entire family is going to be executed and yikes and the chapter before that elias was trying to escape cough with darren and he ends up collapsing and apparently he dies because he's now in the waiting place and the soul catcher is there to greet him i am really close to being done with this book i have like 50 ish pages left i'm going to continue reading some more and i will check back in soon so i have finished a torch against the night and the last 50 pages were great it was definitely super intense reading about laia and elias as they're trying to break out of cough with all these scholars and then helene witnessed both of her parents and one of her younger sisters being executed which Oh my god but now helene's younger sister was spared but now she is going to be marrying marcus and then with elias he's now the soul catcher and the story basically ends with laia and elias and then darren waking up also it was revealed that harper and elias have the same fathers so they're like half siblings now so that definitely was a surprise and hopefully we'll learn more about their fathers in either the third or fourth book i am definitely going to continue with the world and read the third book in September. I had a lot of fun rereading this book. I'm going to put the dust jacket back on the book since I'm finished with it. So that's pretty much it for my reading vlog of A Torch Against the Night. Thank you so much again to Penguin Teen for sponsoring this video. So if you're watching this video at this point, I'm hoping you've already read this book. So definitely let's talk more about it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!